Zamasu is the being that ruined Jiren's life? This is where the story of what if Vegeta learned Ultra Instinct has brought us. After learning Ultra Instinct, Vegeta has come all the way to Universe 11 together with Goku. Vegeta would have a long-awaited rematch against Jiren and then later figured out how to use magical energy during his fight with Belmont. If you guys aren't caught up by now, the previous chapter of What If Vegeta Learned Ultra Instinct will be linked at the top of the screen as well as down below in the comment section and the description box, but as far as where the story goes from here on out, well, let's hop right in. Master Kubo, who is the Mistorian sensei who has been training Jiren, has taken them all to the mystical realm where a shadow of a humanoid figure materializes in front of them. This is the villain who killed Jiren's parents and his master. You see, the real reason Jiren was here on planet Mistoria was to learn the magical Mistorian arts to be able to get into this dimensional gateway because the villain we're talking about doesn't really exist in the known multiverse anymore. He only further exists at the gateway to this mystical realm. When the villain's image completely materializes in front of them, Goku and Vegeta finally realize who they're looking at, and it's Zamasu. But at the same time, it isn't Zamasu. Wait, Jiren, don't kill him just yet. I need answers, Vegeta says. He knows that Jiren's magical energy is powerful enough to kill Zamasu in one blow. He was stronger than Belmont after all at this point. Intervene and I'll have no mercy on you either, Vegeta, Jiren replies. He wasn't in the mood for any interrogation sessions. He was here to permanently erase this villain's existence from every corner of the multiverse. Vegeta knows that it's far too important for them to figure out the villain's true identity and why his silhouette resembles that of Zamasu. So he tries to physically stop Jiren, but Master Kubo just tells him to calm down. Relax, son. Just let Jiren have his moment. I'll answer your questions later, he says. Both Goku and Vegeta are fully aware of how competent and capable Master Kubo is, so they choose to just stay quiet and stay put for the time being. Meanwhile, Jiren punches the villain, but his punches pass right through him. No. No, Jiren screams. It's not the same villain, Master Kubo. He feels the same, but this is not the person who killed my parents nor my master. Hearing this, Master Kubo sighs and then states, All right, Jiren, now listen closely. He is indeed the villain who kills your parents and master, but this version of him hasn't done that yet. What do you mean? Are we in the past? What if I just killed him now? What would happen to my parents and master, Jiren asks. Calm down. No, we're not in the past, Kubo replies. We're actually at the villain's very origin. The moment he materialized in front of you, he was actually being born into existence. Goku and Vegeta were obviously having a pretty hard time following all of this and understanding what's going on, but Jiren was as well. He just wasn't in the mood to calm down either. After confirming that this is indeed the villain who will go on to kill the people most important to him, Jiren unleashes his magical aura. This sends a sudden ripple across the dimension. Everything quakes and they all start seeing visions of both the past and the future. In one of those visions, Goku and Vegeta notice Jiren's parents being killed. One look and there was no doubt in their mind that the individual who killed Jiren's parents looked exactly like Fu Zamasu. But it's more like he was a doppelganger and not the real one. Just what was going on here? None of this made sense. In a separate vision, Jiren spectates himself having a battle to the death pretty much with Vegeta. He wasn't so sure about it though. He doesn't like Vegeta, but he also doesn't hate him enough that he would go as far as trying to kill him for no reason. Just to kind of reiterate Jiren's character here for a second, he is a hero of justice through and through. He doesn't really go about killing people, so just the idea that he would be in a fight to the death with Vegeta is kinda odd to him. Anyways, when the dimensional quakes finally do calm down, Jiren prepares an orb of magical energy that almost resembles a Hakai. He had prepared it for the sole purpose of erasing any trace of this villain's magical energy. Much to everyone's surprise, the villain doesn't even try to counter or anything. He just lets himself get erased. Jiren, wait. Behind you, Master Kubo warns him. It's the villain, but this one looks like Goku. It was Goku Black's silhouette. Jiren turns around to erase him as well, but he was one step behind Vegeta. Vegeta uses his newfound understanding of Mistorian magical arts to redirect Goku Black's magical energy towards him. He then used Force Spirit Vision to absorb all of Goku Black's power and magical energy. Jiren, Goku, and even Master Kubo are left completely speechless. While Vegeta just laughs hysterically as he feels the energy within him reach unimaginable levels. 
after Ultra Ego, then Ultra Instinct, and the Mastorian Arts, one more thing has been added to Vegeta's portfolio. But what's more important is what's going on with this villain, and why does he look like Zamasu and Goku Black? We'll have to wait until Master Kubo explains everything. Jiren is just glaring down at Vegeta when Master Kubo finally takes them out of this realm and back to Planet Mastoria. Jiren seems surprisingly calm on the surface, but inside he was fighting all kinds of demons. Is Vegeta his enemy? Why did Vegeta absorb him and why did the villain look like Goku towards the end there? He has all these questions, but he was trying to tackle them all in his head instead of asking them outright. Vegeta and Goku on the other hand had to pester Master Kubo to finally spill the beans, but he waits until later that night to start talking about it. Master Kubo would go on to explain everything he could possibly know about it. He explains that whenever an anomaly is born in the known universe, its shadow emerges in the mystical realm. He then goes on to explain what he learned about Zamasu, how he was originally killed by Beerus but in an alternate timeline he used the Super Dragon Balls to wish for something not so pleasant. And now that he had seen Zamasu in the image of Goku, he presumes that he must have used the Super Dragon Balls to get a Saiyan's body, which means he is aware that Goku and Vegeta know something about this. Vegeta takes the lead and explains how they fought Zamasu in the future, how he had wished for immortality and everything. This makes sense to Master Kubo, but he then reveals something interesting. He states that the Zamasu who killed Jiren's parents isn't actually the same Zamasu whom they fought. It was his shadow, and the reason Jiren can't kill that shadow is because it also got erased by Zeno. Goku then asks about the Zamasu Jiren erased and the Goku Black that Vegeta absorbed. Master Kubo could only speculate, but what he says pretty much hits the nail on the head. He deduces that when Zamasu and Goku Black fused with each other, another shadow got created. It was that one who killed Jiren's parents, and that's why the shadows of Goku Black and Zamasu still existed. Goku was still confused, but he was honestly too hungry to understand anyway, so he just gets up and starts searching for some food together with the young Mastorian. As for Jiren, he just keeps glaring at Vegeta. What do you want? If you want to fight, that's fine with me, Vegeta says. I can sense it, Vegeta. I can sense that villain's presence oozing off of you, Jiren replies. No, Jiren, that's incorrect. When Vegeta used his technique on the shadow, he made the shadow completely his own. The villain's conscience ceased to exist at that very moment, Master Kubo replies. He knows that Jiren is just being really paranoid right now. Jiren just stays quiet while Vegeta actually asks a very interesting question. Wait, Master Kubo, I understand the villain's existence, but why did he kill Jiren's parents and master in the first place? And didn't this whole Zamasu thing happen just recently? So how the hell did he kill them in the first place? Did he go back in time or something, Vegeta asks? Kubo closes his eyes. To be honest, I have no idea either. It just doesn't make sense no matter how you look at it. And additionally, I don't even understand how the villain managed to come from this realm in the first place. Well, if even you don't know, how are we going to find out the truth, Vegeta asks. I'm afraid the answer lies in Jiren's origins. We need to find out more about his parents and lineage, Master Kubo replies. This is when something suddenly strikes Vegeta. Yeah, there must be something special about Jiren's lineage as well. How else do you explain a mere mortal catching up and then even surpassing the destroyer of his own universe? Everyone looks at Jiren. What? I am the only member of my race still alive and I don't know anything, he says. How about a trip to see Master Zuno? He knows everything, Vegeta says. Yeah, but that'll take a while. Plus, I'm not really on good terms with any of the destroyers, so Jiren will have to go on his own, Master Kubo says. When Goku returns, he has a dead dinosaur slung over his shoulder. When Master Kubo asks what happens to the young Mastorian, Goku says he isn't really too sure he lost track of him a while ago. The young Mastorian eventually catches back up to them, apologizing profusely and explaining that Goku kind of just wandered off while he was preoccupied catching a deer. Vegeta suddenly turns to Goku and challenges him to a one-on-one -on -one sparring session, which of course Goku obliges, so they both fly into the sky. Vegeta wasn't being reckless or anything though, he just knows that if Goku is really cursed from eating a mystical prehistoric beast on this planet, the best way to find out would be by engaging with him in a battle, so the both of them go Super Saiyan. And that's where they stop. They don't go Super Saiyan God or Blue, they don't use Ultra Instinct or Ultra Ego either, just pure Super Saiyan. The fight begins and it's surprisingly laid back at first, almost as if neither of them are trying to prove anything. Almost as if Vegeta is no longer trying to prove that he's stronger than Goku. 
Jiren observes and notices the stark contrast between this fight and the fight that he was going to have with Vegeta in the future. He wouldn't admit it, but he was worried. He was worried about whatever was going to happen between him and Vegeta in the future. As for the fight between Goku and Vegeta, Vegeta's final flash is redirected back at him thanks to Goku's usage of the Mastorian arts. He tries absorbing it back, but Vegeta can tell something is odd. The energy doesn't get reabsorbed by him. Instead, the full brunt of the force hits Vegeta. Meanwhile, Goku experiences a sudden headache that causes him to revert back to his base state. Jiren just looks at Master Kubo. I know, I know, you think the villain is still inside Vegeta and that's why Vegeta wasn't able to absorb his energy the same way he used to, but I still can't sense another magical presence inside of Vegeta, Master Kubo says. He then walks up to Goku and gives him a little bit of the potion he had made. It helps relieve the headache, but Goku notices how he can no longer transform into a Super Saiyan or a Super Saiyan God. The only reasonable explanation is whatever happened to him when he wandered off while Vegeta and Jiren were fighting, or I don't know, maybe it has something to do with Goku completely ignoring Master Kubo's warning on the magical and cursed energy that mythical creatures on this planet have, and Goku going out and eating one anyway. 